Texas Tech looks to regain some confidence this week in a big way. A Coliseum clash with always tough Missouri and a road rematch with Brian Skinner and the Baylor Bears. Highlights plus an up-close look at senior DeMond Roberts next on the James Dickey Show. Texas Tech fans, we welcome you back here for another edition of the James Dickey Show. I'm Brian Mudd, and of course, as always, we're talking Red Raider basketball with the coach himself, James Dickey. Pleasure to have you with us as always. You know, Coach, I talked to Corey Carr this week, and he said with 10 games to go, not only did we have to win all 10, he thought we could win all 10. Well, we certainly needed to get off to a more consistent start in the second half of the conference race. It, it all started at home uh, with Missouri, and then we had to go on the road. Uh, we would played well at times on the road, but hadn't finished. And uh, certainly to be able to win at home against Missouri and then complement that with a win on the road with, at Baylor would be big. Well, let's talk with our, about our first game. You know, after what happened at Kansas last weekend, the Red Raiders were more than ready to hit the floor on Wednesday night at home. You know, nobody likes to be embarrassed, but when it happens, Players want to redeem themselves. Missouri happened to be in the way of that redemption. So here we go from the Coliseum. The coach, as always, will help us out. Home crowd really into this one. Well, we had a good crowd, and I thought they were enthusiastic. And Missouri's got a good basketball team. They beat four top 20 teams there. Nice transition basket from Rayford to Corey to Cliff Owens. Good finish. And bounce play here. Stan Bonowitz looking for Corey. It's a nice play to Corey Carr, and he creates his own shot after he gets the initial screen. Good finish. 14-0 run by Tech to open the ball game. Got to love that. It was off to a great start. You just can't leave Stan Bonowitz that wide open. Rayford did a nice job of recognizing in transition. Uh, Stan buried the three-pointer. Norm Stewart's club in trouble and coming from behind. And, of course, Corey Card doing it all night. This is a good read defensively. A nice extra pass from Corey into Cliff. Stan Bonowitz here going to make a little wild pass, but what a great hustle play by Mr. Owens. Not a good pass, but a good hustle play, as you mentioned. And then Stan comes in, makes a big play, and that's something we want to see him do more of is get into the medium-range game and get to the free throw line. Not much from Missouri early on. Here's Kelly Thames, one of their great players. Leading score, and there we let him get back to the middle. We try to keep the players out of the middle, but I thought overall we did a good job on Kelly Thames. He's a good player. Archie Myers into the ball game. It's a good ball fake, gets inside, nice finish, gets to the glass, and uh, Archie certainly has come off the bench and give us big help at times. And Stan Bonowitz exciting the crowd a little behind the back action. Has great vision of the floor, found Rayford, that makes for an easy three. All right, so Rayford, a little harbinger of things to come there. 44-28 Texas Tech with the lead at the halftime. When you have that big lead, do you want to really press the, the guys at halftime to come out and play even harder? Well, Brian, what I told our guys, we had a 22-point lead in the first half. We allowed Missouri to hit two big threes, one right before the end of the, of the half, and certainly that gives them momentum. So I was disappointed that we let the lead get below 20, but we wanted to go out in the second half, establish ourselves, execute on the offensive end, continue to play very good defense. And the intensity was there early on as we go to second half action. Some good crisp passing here. Did a good job passing the basketball. That's a nice screen by Corey. Good finish by Cliff underneath. Really established our inside game. Cliff's going to play some defense here as well. Well, he helped up too far up the floor and then had to come back on Harsh, which makes a nice recovery. Big block. A lot of uh, fans really into that one. Real war inside between Harge and Owens and everyone all night. Yeah, Harge is big and they got a great front line. There's a nice screen by Ross Carmichael. Rayford Young had a terrific game and certainly exploded in the second half with three threes in a row. Really turned into the Rayford Young show from the midway point of the half on. Exciting. Six of eight three pointers. What, what do you say? Well, he was just tremendous. He'd worked hard on his shooting. He'd been in a shooting slump and he stayed late after practice and worked hard. Here's a nice pass from. Stanley into uh, Corey, and Corey's good at that finish right there. But Rafer's worked hard, and I'm really uh, glad to see him shoot the ball so well. It's a nice pass from Archie. Good read on the defense. Nice back cut and finish. Rayford Young got to finish with a three when he had so many three-pointers all night. 27 points for Rayford Young. Just absolutely dynamic, and Texas Tech gets the victory. 80-60 to 60 over the Missouri Tigers. A tremendous win all around. Corey Carr added 21 points, but... We had talked to Rayford afterwards, and he talked about how he and his team dominated this one. They've overcame some big leads this year at Iowa, and, uh, and uh, you know, they're, they're, they're just a good team inside and out, and we did a great job of playing uh, good defense on their big guys. And once we got the rebound, we kicked it out and we ran up the floor because we, we knew we had a faster team, and that really helped us. And, Coach, I know that he was excited about that big game. He'd been in a bit of a slump. 
Well, he's a team player. He's a winner. He's a young man that I really enjoy coaching because he loves to compete, and it certainly bothered him as much as anyone. But we were glad to see him get back on track, and he did it in fine fashion. Six threes when you hit five and one half. <laughs> All right. Now, if you turn the channel now, you'll hate yourself for it later. Our da James Dickey cameras hit the road for a Sunday afternoon rematch of monumental proportions. Remember what happened when Baylor came to Lubbock earlier this season? You know the Red Raiders did. Another one of those shots at redemption when the big show returns. Let's start with the brewmaster for just a moment. The brewmaster is the chef, and that is the key brewmaster role, to understand the blending of his or her ingredients. Not only he or she tastes the beer every day, there's another person who tastes the beer every day, and that is me. The ability to have hands-on brewmasters working with the finest ingredients gives you Budweiser. Ron, what happened to you? Ah, pigskin at Larry's. Went 50 yards for the old TD, triple tackled. In touch football? Well, the fellas get a little rough, you know. Darren from accounting? Okay, I went out for a pass and I tripped over Larry's dog. Ouch. Try Sports Care, Methodist Outpatient Rehabilitation. They've got a great strength and conditioning program and a free Saturday walk-in clinic. Well, I think I'll go. Uh, you know, Larry's got a big dog. The Dachshund or the Pekingese? Griffin Companies of Lubbock, Griffin Oil Company, Country Fair Restaurant, 4609 Avenue A in Lubbock, Highway 82 Truck Stop on the Idaloo Highway, and Rip Griffin's Truck Service Center on 4609 Avenue A, Lubbock. All proudly support James Dickey and the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Rip Griffin Companies have long been a supporter of Texas Tech Athletics. Good luck to Coach Dickey and the Red Raiders. Well, we lost a tough one at home against them, and we felt we had that game. And, you know, that's going to be in the back of our mind Sunday when we go out uh, to play them. And uh, we're going to be, you know, trying to, trying to play hard and trying to get that revenge. Welcome back to the James Dickey Show. Rayford Young talking about that Baylor contest. I thought the guys in practice after that big win over Missouri looked a little more confident. Did you see? think so? Well, they, they know they're a good basketball team, but certainly it helps to win. And beating a team that had just come off a week where they'd beaten number two. A good young man. Of course, he joins us again. And again, he's outdressed us again. What are you going to do with these guys? i tell you what. Damon, thanks for being with us. I know after this semester, just 13 hours left until graduation. Talk about your major and some of the classes you're taking this semester. Basically, I'm taking Spanish right now, the first part of Spanish. I took two years of Spanish in high school, and it's been a while since I've, I've taken that uh, class, and it's, it's kind of difficult, but I've got some uh, good tutors to help me out, and, and basically, I just have to keep my head in, the, in my books and just, you know, do the little things, like I said earlier. And I know you've talked about coaching as a possible future. What would be here on the James Dickey Show? We're talking about the future, of course. This next week going to be tough as well, and of course, we've got to talk about what the fans have question-wise for you as we corner the coach. Coach Dickey, my name is Dale Batty. I'm Tony's mother, and I'd just like to know if you miss Tony or what. <laughs> she knows I miss Tony. She yeah. was down at uh, Waco Day. We were glad to, to see Miss Batty uh, down to, at the Baylor House uh, for the Aggies on that Saturday afternoon game. Because of the schedule, we've had very few Saturday games, as you mentioned. It'll be a great opportunity for our fans to get out to the Coliseum. Any particular reasons for that, the, the, the low amount of home games for you on Saturday? Well, they try to move it around. I know it's very difficult uh, to put together uh, the schedule, but sometimes you have more Wednesday games on the road. Sometimes you have more at home, and hopefully it'll work out over a four-year period where we will get several Saturday games home. You love to play at home on the weekend so your crowd uh, can see you play, especially where uh, we're out here in the West Texas area where people can come in from uh, all over the region to see us play. Finally, do you like the way the Red Raiders are right now as we go into that big stretch run? 
Well, you'd like to have more wins, but I think we put ourselves in a position right now to finish very strong. The South is still wide open. Certainly Oklahoma has the lead. We've got to play them twice. They've got to play Kansas. They've got to play Oklahoma State. They've got to play Texas again. Their schedule is not easy. What we've got to do is take them one game at a time, be ready every time we toss it up, Brian. I know you will. We're out of time for this week's show. Coach and I, of course, return every week at this same time to talk Red Raider basketball with you. For James Dickey, I'm Brian Mudd. We'll see you at the game and next week here on the James Dickey Show. James Dickey's Wardrobe, provided by Dillard's. Conference Cafe, we take having fun very seriously. J&M Barbecue, best smoked barbecue in West Texas. Cap Rock Drug, right on the corner, right on the price, right on the way home. TNMNO, for all your charter needs, Lubbock, Texas. And Comet, one-hour cleaners and laundry. We take pride in your wardrobe.